Welcome back to the great outdoors, everybody. Thanks for subscribing here to the channel. If you haven't already, go ahead and do so. We want to hit that big million mark, and we're close. Uh, we got some deer roaming around this morning here at, at deer camp, and we're getting ready to head down to set up a bushcraft camp in the Texas backcountry. Two to three miles back behind me. I've camped at the top of it before and I've always thought it'd be a really cool place to set up a camp down at the bottom. So the goal for today is to find the perfect spot to set up a bushcraft camp and set up a, a tarp. Uh, tarp shelter is something pretty cool. I've, I've always used like a lightweight backpacking tent but a tarp is even more compact, lightweight. Uh, normally, if you're going backpack hunting uh, or you know backcountry hiking or something like that, this is going to be something like what you take, just pretty minimalistic stuff. However, uh, we are in rattlesnake country. That's one thing that I'm I am pretty worried about. It would be a two to three mile hike to get back here, and then probably over an hour drive to get to the nearest hospital and I just want to give myself a fighting chance also my first time going in bushcrafting you know I don't I don't know exactly what my gear needs to be for me like what I'm comfortable with dialing in I think I have it all in the backpack but I've got a few extra things saws a few extra clothes and I'm trying to dial that in so just practicing uh, like I said in my other video making fire Bushcrafting is supposed to be it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a, a getaway. It's something you can literally do in your backyard or you can take it to the backcountry if you want. And you know, you can bring those creature comforts. Whereas like survival is it, worst case scenario. Like that that's not fun. Whatever you can carry in that's gonna make it comfortable and not be cluttersome, I think that's the way to go. But I got the meat wagon today and it's gonna be our first time making a bushcraft camp and spending the night in it. So we got some a few extra accoutrements. Let's get in the meat wagon and let's go get down on the river. Already ran into a hog, a big one. It's bigger than the one that I got yesterday. So there's always a surprise around the corner at the least. It's one reason I love it. Look at these huge, just magnificent walls, y'all. They're colored orange, blue, green. So many little offshoots up there. There's a shelf above me. We just gotta find that spot that screams homey, you know? Doesn't have the creep vibes. We got easy access to the river. Kinda like this little area, to be honest. probably aren't going to believe this, but uh, these little fire pits right here is actually a, uh, a scene, not from a movie, but from a reality show called Naked and Afraid. <laughs> There's another one right here. So this is where they decided to camp. How do I know that? Well, uh, some of the guys showed up here one day and there was production crew uh, so they use they use this area this lease to uh, to do to film naked and afraid I don't, I'm not sure how they turned out oh look at these two gorgeous trees placed just perfectly apart in a flat area next to a deep pool oh yeah we can set up some fishing lines off these trees right here y'all <laughs> and i want to say that is an ash tree which is 
good for making fires, feather sticks. I don't even know what kind of trees these are, but it's gonna work. I gathered a bunch of rocks along the way so we could make a, a fire pit. I've got three fairly straight cedar uh, posts that I've cut down so we can make a tripod. And we're ready to set up camp, y'all. I'm liking this setup y'all. We got our fire ring set up. We're going to be building a fire here in a little bit, making some lunch. Never done the tarp setup before. Uh, this one is made by AquaQuest. Um, I had another one I was playing around with that it was okay, but it didn't have all the, the D loops that this one does. This would be one that I would actually take like backpack hunting. I go into Colorado or Wyoming or something like that. So the reason I like it is it has a bunch of these loops and I've got stakes with me so I can stick down uh, this tarp, but you can configure this in so many different ways. If you wanted to just make like a, uh, an A-frame or a plow point, you can just do so many things with it. You can fully enclose it and uh, this one is a 10 by 10. So there's a lot of ways that you can set this up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a ridge line between these two trees and then I'm gonna basically make an A-frame and I'm gonna put my hammock underneath it. So that'll keep any kind of moisture, uh, dew off of me. I think it's gonna be down in the 40s tonight, so it should be perfect. Um, if it was colder, like if it was freezing, below freezing, I would probably do a plow point on the ground, which is like a, a diamond shaped or just sort of like a an, an half open, like a lean-to, where the fire can kind of sweep in, get some warmth off of that. But because we're probably gonna be in like the 50s, high 40s, 50s tonight, the thing with the snakes just bucked me. So I wanna be off the ground. So I'm gonna set up with a shelter above my hammock. In my backpack, by the way, I've just got a sleeping bag. This is my normal one that I take backpack hunting. Got a, a puffy jacket that I can make into a pillow. Uh, I do have a, a pad, a sleeping pad I've set up, and I've got, uh, I've got a grill grate, we're going to be using that, and then I've got just a bunch of uh, paracords set up in like 25 foot sections, and then I should have a ridge line in here somewhere. So I'm really not sure how high I need to set up this ridge line for the tarp, but we're gonna get a bit of a shot here. The hammock's probably gonna be about uh, chest, chest level. First thing I'm gonna do, just as an anchor point, I'm gonna tie a, a bowline knot around this tree. Bowline knot is good because it won't cinch down on itself you can untie it really easily. Most bushcraft knots you can untie really easily. So we're going to run this over here. So the other knot that we're going to tie over here is called a trucker's hitch. It's a really cool knot because it cinches down the line. Sort of like you would use a, a ratchet strap. I'm going to come over here about a third way down this ridge line and I'm going to tie a loop like that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tag in here, feed it through that loop that I made, and it's going to create this lever here that I can really cinch up that ridge line. And I'm just going to pinch it right there. I'm going to throw a half hitch over this. I'm going to cinch it down right where that knot is. 
Uh, it could be a little bit tighter. There we go. Trying to practice this, make this good. Make sure my ridge line's nice and tight. So it's time to attach our hammock to the, the mule tape ropes that came with it. This almost always happens where you know, you're going to set up your hammock and the distance between the trees is uh, kind of weird. So they have these loops in here that help you adjust for that, but I've just got one that's like super long the way I've tied it. The other one's kind of short. Um, I just can't get it exactly right. So what I'm going to do is take a uh, toggle. All the toggle is is a stick. So I'm going to tie something like a lark's head right here. And when you do that, and you put your toggle through it, that just allows you to easily take that toggle out and you don't have a knot to undo. Put the toggle in. And that's nice and tight. Not going anywhere. And I'm going to put the carabiner around the top of that knot. So that's going to go right there. It's going to press against the knot and then the toggle maybe a little bit. And then I'll be able to adjust over here. Should be able to get it just right. Should be just about perfect. So I don't have a toggle in the other one. I'm just attaching it and then you know this would have been way too long. Would have been touching the ground and when I wrapped it around the tree twice it was way too short. So just putting a little toggle in really helps mm, thinking we need to be a hair taller our bed is made isn't that pretty we got a bug net set up on it so we can keep the uh, keep any kind of aerial critters out I don't I don't think we're gonna have mosquitoes right now but when it's the middle of the night and you hear a mosquito I mean, it just ruins it. And lately when I've been truck camping, I've had mosquitoes come out. And it's like 40 degrees. So, not going to do that. Uh, got the bug net. Got the sleeping bag in there with the pillow. Ready to go. Um, we're pretty high off the ground. Feel a little safer. But I've got a high spot right here that I can sink my butt into. And then, of course, when I lay in it, it sinks down quite a bit. So now, we have our ridge line up top. And we're going to add some toggles to these pressic loops right here which is a really cool knot it slides when there's no tension on it when you put tension it won't it won't slide so that's what we're gonna uh, put some toggles in for the tarp to stretch it out over this and I'm thinking about making a little uh, little lean-to mod and having it to where it's partially open on this side and then it's it's fully closed on the other side so we need some stakes we need some bank line and we're gonna get it going this is gonna be a cool setup get out a couple toggles it helps if you smooth them out so you can get the rope off really quick but quite honestly you can pick up any stick off the ground break it and it'll be a toggle but usually about finger width works pretty well okay so now we're gonna take our tarp I'm gonna throw it over the, the ridge line take toggle number one so you just want to feed so I'm going to feed this loop through here make a lark's head knot and put a toggle through and I can slide my tent it looks like the width of these trees is going to be just about perfect We'll slide over here to our other end. We'll feed this little loop through here. Get our lark's head, put our toggle. And then pull 
tight. There we go. So the idea now is we're just going to take some stakes, some extra string, and I might even set up a couple of poles out here to leave this side more open. I'm liking it. It's just taken me a long time because I've never set up a you know, real bushcraft camp like this. I like having my little uh, backpack tent. It's so, so easy, and I feel safe sleeping in it on the ground, but it's the reason I'm making so many preparations because I want to be able to actually get a good night's sleep and be able to do this, come out here to this spot often and hunt out of here, and I don't want to feel like sketched out. I want it to feel really, really good, just like I'm sleeping in the truck or not quite at home. Let's not get ourselves. So I'm tying a bowline in one end, feed it through this loop right here. Tighten down on that corner there. All right, there's one. That looks good. I think what I'm gonna do now, we might as well make this thing fancy, y'all. I'm gonna take some of these posts that I was gonna make a tripod out of. Got these gathered earlier. And I'm gonna loop these around the tarp. I'm gonna have to clean these up a little bit, but then I can take some bank line, pull on it, put a stake in the ground, do that on both sides, and I've got a nice open area. I don't think we're going to have rain. There's like a 20% chance. But if we do, I can move these back. I can shorten this. You get the idea though. I can move these back, still pull on it, stake it, and then I've got an actual angled roof that the rain is going to roll off of. But having it up like this is plenty of shelter and it's going to give me some heat off of my, uh, my fire this evening. So feel really good about this. Good strong cedar posts. I'm just going to clean them up with the knife. I'll actually use uh, actually use this bark right here to start my fire. This cedar bark's really good stuff. So, there we go. We're just uh, we're just doing it out here in the woods, guys. Making a little paradise. Just trying to get the circumference of this just wide enough. I've got a sharp end now I can stick in the ground. And then this is the end I'm gonna pull out and just need it to go around that that loop. So should be pretty much there, y'all. Two of these staked. We got a good shelter. Just gonna do a lark's head, lark's head loop to put around our stake. Probably the easiest knot ever to tie, and it just comes right out. Put it right in that little groove there, and then I can pull this right angle. That should be perfect. Push that in the ground. There we go. All right, so we're snugged up right there. That looks good. Bowline knot again, and a simple way to remember it: you know, make a loop in your line. The bunny goes in the hole, around the tree, 
and back into the hole. And that is just easy to get out, even when you put a lot of pressure on it. it takes just a little bit of, you know, fingernailing, and then it's out. So that's the beautiful thing about it. So we'll tie that up here again, just big enough to go around our uh, our big stake, and then we're in business. Put this through here. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but I'm thinking that is looking pretty juicy right there. All right, one more little knot right here on our steak. We are good. Wabam! Shelter with hammock uh, between the trees. We got our campfire up here. We're going to use this uh, leftover cedar bark to get our fire going. Dad gum. Just crafting that in the bush. Quite proud of it. Quite proud of it. So, this is my first time setting one up. And uh, I like it. Again, if it starts to rain, I can just pull these back and make it more of an A-frame. But it's kind of a little modified A-frame. Loving it. And then we got our hammock right here. This is going to be cozy. Feeling good about camp, y'all. I'm actually going to be able to sleep in peace as long as... No mountain lions come down here, and I'm sure, as you guys can see, this, this game trail. Game trail goes right through here. I'm sure we're going to have some things walking through tonight. But since I went ahead and used my posts that I was going to use for my tripod, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just find some other ones. I'm just going to rummage around the campsite here, see if I can find some semi-straight sticks, and then we're going to make a tripod. Just trying to smooth the ends of these these posts out a little bit so when I go to put my cordage on here it's gonna be nice and delightful okay that's pretty good I've got uh, most of the outer bark removed from just the ends and the cedar I went ahead and took most of it off so we got three really good stakes about six foot tall that now we're gonna make our tripod. I'm still pretty green on tying together stuff like this using cordage uh, to really do it the best way, but I've been trying to learn. So I'm gonna show you guys what, what I know to do. I'm gonna leave a tag end a couple feet long. Go around these, you wanna leave them flat. And I'm going to leave about, um, you know, a hand's length from the, the rope to the top. Because when we space these out, they're going to want to, uh, they're going to want to ride up. So I'm going to wrap this four times. Try to get a nice pretty wrap on it. One 
more for luck. And I'm just going to loosen one of these knots a little bit and bring the rest of the line through. And that's called a, a clove hitch. Which it's not a really tight knot, but it kind of gets things going. There's some buzzards sitting on the edge of this canyon looking down on me, making weird noises. Next I'm going to take the rope, I'm going to put it in these cracks right here. And I'm going to make some loops this way. It's kind of a pain when you have a ton of rope like I do. Because you got to run this, run this through a multiple times, so I'm going to do two times. It's really starting to get tight. Okay. Do one more time through there. Now we're going to come over to this next one. Oh, it's tight. There we go. I'm going to change angles so you guys can see this. Okay, so coming up through here now. I'm going to do a couple of these. One more time through here. Okay, just to finish it off, we'll do a couple more of those wraps. And then we'll just come in through here, do that clove hitch. So now that clove hitch is in there, it's pretty much done. So. I've got a lot of excess. I'm just going to wrap this up, make some medium sized loops here. Just wrap it on itself like that. And we'll do clove hitch in that. Tighten that off. And then we can put that loop right there. And we're good to go. And now should be able to spread out our tripod like so. There we go. That works pretty good. That's a pretty good tripod. Got some wood ready to go. And this tripod is going to hang over the fire like this. So now what we can do is we can make ourselves a little toggle to go on the end of this. Then you can take a lark's head knot, like I've been tying on all these toggles, and put it through there. Or you could do a uh, marline spike hitch, which is another good knot for adding toggles. Like this, it kind of does a uh, adds like a knot on each side of it and it's it's adjustable so then we can hang our pot so let's just grab our pot for example stick it through here so we can hang our pot and then if we need to raise it up we can come up here and come around one of the sticks raise it up I don't really like doing it that way what I'll probably do is build a, a pot hanger. And a pot hanger, you can take a stick like this, for example. A stick like that it has a, a natural curved little branch like that on it. So you could take your pot hanger 
and then you could put it on a loop and you could adjust that that loop or you could take your lark's head and you could move your your lark's head down move it up there's just a lot of ways that you can do it but anyways we're gonna get a fire going and now we have a complete camp y'all beds made uh, it's time to enjoy camp cook up some food baby all right guys starting the fire this is kind of the last step so I've got all this great cedar bark I'm gonna crunch it up in here I'm just gonna make a giant bird's nest out of this stuff Wow I think I actually found some bird's nest that is luck right there that's like hair or bird's nest or something I've heard you can even use the down off feathers like you know, off birds. Now I've just placed two medium sized fuel logs in there. Bird's nests down there. Take that off for a minute. And we'll just get our fire steel, like I showed you in the other video. Using a different knife today Bark River Aurora. Which I should get a decent fling off this thing. go wow that was fast that's more of those shavings right there and we'll get our kindling going on top That's going pretty good. I think that only took three strikes off the fire steel. Using a little bit better steel today. A2. And I try to get the biggest fire steel as I can get. I think it's six, eight, six inches long and three eighths round, but it just makes it a lot easier and it lasts a long time. But we're up and going here, off to the races. Oh man, guys, this feels good. I can do it. I can do this. I wanted to test my skills, all the stuff I've learned. And um, I feel confident enough to hunt out of here, which I think we are. <laughs> I think we are gonna do some hunting out of here. So the other thing is pretty cool here, guys. This is just setting up so perfect. As long as I keep that fire, you know, a medium fire, don't get too crazy with it. That heat is just traveling right in here and it's circulating around my bag. I mean, it's just perfect to keep warm at night. This is a really good tarp, really good quality tarp. So I just gotta be careful that I don't get, you know, embers going up in there and putting holes in my tarp. So we'll just keep the fire on medium and uh, now it's time to cook something up. All right, last thing we're gonna do, last thing we're gonna build for now. It's all fun though, it's fun doing this. We're gonna take our bushcraft to the next level. I got my, uh, got my toggle that was on the pot. I'm gonna make two notches in it. It's gonna be holding uh, two pieces of wire. So I've got, uh, I've got some jalapeno poppers, believe it or not that I've been wanting to cook up here today. And I've got some trapping wire, some trapping line. It happens to be metal. So I have this grate and I thought, well, I could put two rocks in there. And that would probably work. I could put the grate on top of that. But usually it gets pretty ashy in there. You gotta wait till it's pretty much straight coals. So I've got these two notches in here I'm gonna put my paracord in the middle and the metal rings that are on this, this trap snare are gonna go right in here. It's important that I get that stick balanced. All right, so we have a grate, a 
grate is on our our snares basically snared it on both sides and there is a cooking grate suspended above the fire I just need to adjust it a little bit so it's hanging perfectly level now we have a suspended cooking grate on trapping wire balanced on our toggle on our tripod Wabam bushcraft all right little appetizer made a stop at the Bucky's as usual jalapeno poppers baby stuff with cream cheese wrapped in apple smoked bacon and we're going to be putting that on an oak oak smoking fire here I have to balance our food weight wise this little teetering job could get dangerous so far we're looking pretty good let's move it a little bit closer into our fire there we go that is the sound of greatness right there camp built just chilling on a stump right now and that bacon grease is dropping in there giving that sizzle pop oh man it's a great day to be in the outdoors glad you're with me all first time doing this I feel I feel like I can do it I can hang I've gotten lucky with conditions obviously everything's pretty much perfect and it's like 50 degrees outside and overcast hardly any wind I'm gonna enjoy some jalapeno poppers and I'm gonna throw a chicken breast on here and it is just straight living the good outdoor life ladies and gentlemen oh no in a tragic accident I lost I lost most of my my poppers they all fell in the fire I'm left with just nasty bacon cream cheese that is just that's something to cry about you know don't don't cry over spilled milk but definitely cry over spilled jalapeno poppers into the fire well I'm gonna have some grimy ones some crusty ones to eat got to make sure I don't make that mistake again not the best engineering I was feeling pretty good about myself not the best engineering so I, I mean this thing has to be balanced there's got to be a better way for me to do this hey want to know how those jalapeno poppers tasted I don't know couldn't tell you I dropped the rest of them in the fire made a little adaption here put a knot my system's bad all right don't do this guys be smarter than I am okay stuffed with jalapeno cream cheese chicken breast we can't lose this one y'all we just can't lose this one. Oh yeah balance oh no oh my god the system's terrible immediately regretting this with my axe Oh, what a fail. Oh, no. Oh, that bacon is so slippery. No, no. Oh, no. You think I would learn? Massive fail. Massive fail. LOLs. Go ahead. Drop them in the comments. I deserve it. Lost all of my bacons. And uh, I don't even know why I'm cooking with this thing at this point. This is a, this is a terrible contraption that I've built. Terrible bushcraft build. Build. What I should do is just let the fire work its way down and then put the grate on top of some rocks. But I'm hungry and I got in a hurry and I just said, oh, I'll just cook it above the fire. So I don't know exactly what to do to make this situation better. But it's looking like we're going to be getting some nice, nice little char on our, uh, on our chickens. I might have salvaged like one jalapeno popper, maybe. I mean, it's it's nasty, but 
It is bacon, it's protein, it's got grass on it. She's gonna go for it. Let's do it. Yeah. There's definitely some extra in there. Is it possible to just take the spine of your knife and scrape all the crusties off? Ash. Ah, oh, that's gross. We'll try an ashy one. Not bad. Pretty gritty. Not really good either. I think I might take the rest of the bacon and use it as bait for fishing. Old little dangler here. Oh, I think we might be ready. Okay, I just need to move you right here. All right, we've had a minute to cool. Let's see what we're working with here. Yeah, not the proudest of my, uh, my cooking setup here, but things have been learned. We'll scrape off a couple of the uh, crusties. Yeah, we definitely got some sticks and ash and stuff in there, but it's looking pretty good. Cream cheese, chicken, bacon. Looking pretty nice. Let's give it a go. Oh, that'll work. Well, we salvaged it, y'all. Had to go in there. Hands are a little burned. Had to fish it out with the axe and the knife. But, it's just cooked good. cooked in on oak so there's real no nasty smoke flavor it's really good we're gonna set out some lines tonight and I also have my first rifle ever here um, my lever action 22 so we're gonna be looking for squirrels if, uh, if some hogs come in you know little piglet over the fire you know what I'm saying or maybe even get a fish I think we're gonna be fine thanks to our uh, our good setup here so thank you guys for tuning in today life in the outdoors really living it feels good y'all and i gotta say bushcraft whether you're doing it you know out here in the bush or just in the backyard it's pretty fun to do it's pretty fun to craft things out of natural materials and uh you know just living living off the land the old way so go ahead and smash that like button for the great outdoors subscribe because you don't want to miss the next one and i'll see you guys on the next one